This video gives a guided introduction to the Bill of Materials layout, functionality and personalisation. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will use the DSPIC 33 recorder layout. For this, choose Open Sample from the Project Selector, choose Type Tutorial and pick any of the DSPIC 33 samples. The Bill of Material works off the schematic, not the PCB layout. From the tab bar at the top, select the Bill of Materials icon to open the module. The right hand of the screen is the physical view of the Bill of Materials report and also lets you switch to the Property Editor. The Property Editor presents a spreadsheet style table to amend or update information on your components and is covered in full later on in this video. The control panel at the left hand side provides configuration options and allows you to add or remove content from the report. The report view represents the physical paper size of the bill of materials. Like many programs, this can be adjusted in terms of size and orientation. The template drop down box allows you to switch between different templates that you have already created. The tab at the top right of the control panel allows you to hide it for a full screen view of the physical report. Like other modules in Proteus, the Bill of Materials has live updates, so any changes made to the schematic come across automatically. For example, the module M1 has two instances on this design copy. If we return to ISIS and place another example of the same component onto the schematic, we can see how the Bill of Material adds this and updates the component lists and count accordingly. As with all top level modules in Proteus, you can separate the Bill of Materials into a new window by either left holding the mouse and dragging into the blank space on your desktop or by double clicking on it. At any time you have the output options of the Bill of Materials on the top menu bar. Outputs include printing, PDF with optional project notes attachment, Excel spreadsheets, or CSV file. The template controls at the top allow you to create, edit and save templates. A template is basically a set of styles and content which you can create to match your company's style both in appearance and colour and reuse in different projects. The two buttons underneath let you create and edit a header and footer and also give you access to various text styles used in the report. Now we're going to look at how we can configure the appearance of the Bill of Materials report. Before we make any changes, we'll create a new template and call it Test. The title of the Bill of Material is taken directly from the name on your schematic. This will populate automatically upon opening the Bill of Materials. Also, specific details of the design again are imported directly from the design settings from ISIS. To add or amend any of these details, Firstly, return to the ICES module. From the Design menu at the top of the screen, select Edit Design Properties. Add or amend any of the fields required. Click OK and now return to your Bill of Materials module. Any changes you made have already been transferred through to the Bill of Materials for you. You can add custom headers and footers, much like any Word style documents. Click the Edit Header Footer button to open the dialog box and use the tabs to switch between header and footer content. The Edit Style button at the left will launch the styling dialog. This is very similar to what you'd see in a typical word processing tool. The item being styled is selected from the combo box at the top of the dialog and the three main tabs then let you specify font, spacing and background for the currently selected item. then simply type in any information you wish. The ruler at the top, together with the tab stops, allows you to position different content in different areas of the page. In the header, add the logo with the Insert Image button. Position the cursor to the left of the image and use the tab button to move it across to the tab stop. If things are misaligned, you can drag the tab stop to get everything the way you want it. The process for the footer is identical for that of the header. Once completed, all the overview details of the schematic are in place, ready to be formatted into your preferred design. 
To save the changes made so far, click the Save button at the right of the template selector. The Bill of Materials title can be edited just as the text in the header a minute ago. Select Header Table from the top combo box. The font content is disabled because we are styling the table and not the content. Switch to the background tab and add a thin border. If we change to Header Table Titles or Header Table Values, we can then access the font settings and change as desired. The padding controls under background and borders allows you to position the text within the effective property cell without adjusting the position of other properties around it. The spacing options are useful to control the gap between categories or rows in the table. This can also help better paginate the report. Adjusting the top or the bottom margin will expand the gap between categories on the Bill of Materials report. You can continue to edit the Bill of Materials, such as indenting the header table and changing the field header font, until you have a completed template in terms of layout and colour. Many other examples and a reference chart for the styles can be found in the help documentation. The Categories box shows the device categories in use on the schematic as well as a few common defaults. We can reorder these as you wish by clicking on the category you wish to move and using the up and down arrows to rearrange the display order. As you can see here, resistors have been moved to the top of the page. At any time you can add, edit or delete a category as well as the display method. This option box will hide any category with no device in it, and these options will either group sequential identical parts or individually list every component. We're going to look at adding properties to the components using the fields section. The default has several properties preloaded, but you can add as many as you like, both predefined in Proteus or your own user defined. Like the categories section earlier, clicking add will allow you to choose your fields. This drop-down list contains all properties that are currently recognised by the Bill of Material. Simply scroll up or down the list to the property you require and click on it. Click OK to add it to your Bill of Materials. The viewer window automatically switches to the property editor and the property you selected is added at the end of the table, like a column in a spreadsheet. You can repeat this process as many times as you wish. Properties can be added if they do not already exist. For example, minimum order quantity is not on our list. To add it, click New and complete the dialog box for your required property. You can now see all your additional properties are added to the Bill of Material Property Editor. You can also remove a property if it is decided that they are not needed or they have been added by mistake. Like the categories, you can reorder the properties to suit yourself. These will move left or right on the display. There are three different techniques available to edit the property values. Firstly, there is the drag and copy function similar to that found in programs such as spreadsheet editors. Secondly, we have the Find and Replace facility. From the Edit menu, select Replace Property Value. By leaving the Find field blank, you will replace all empty cells. Choose your new value to replace and make sure Current Column Only is selected. 
Replace all will fill all your blank cells with your chosen value. Thirdly, you can manually enter, i.e. type the values for each component. For speed here, we'll assume all remaining components have the same value. The Apply Changes button will assign these new properties and values to the Bill of Materials physical view and update your components. Bill of Material Notes allows you to add a short piece of information into the Bill of Materials. Selecting the Edit button opens the text dialog box. From here, enter any information you need or want on the Bill of Materials. By pressing Save, the notes are added to the layout just below the design details and can be formatted like any other part of the Bill of Materials. If more detail or more complete documentation is required, you can type up in the Project Notes module and then use the checkbox at the top to append the notes to the end of the PDF output for the Bill of Materials. At any time you can edit the fields to gain more specific views or layouts. Each field now has the Enable External Links option. This allows you to link your Bill of Materials to URL addresses of your choice, for example supplier websites. Once selected, this field is shown by selecting the tick box at the top of the screen. The methods for populating these columns are identical to those shown earlier. Once completed, these fields do not show as individual fields on the Bill of Materials. Instead, they turn your existing field properties into hyperlinks to the URL you specified. This can be refined further, if wished, to include exact product pages of a manufacturer's website. As these are often long, complicated URLs, you are able to copy and paste into the property value cell. Removing the Show Links option from the property editor will remove the columns from this view, but will leave links in place on the physical bill of materials. To remove them from the bill of materials, you'll need to edit the field again and deactivate the Enable External Links option. When selected, the links are accessible by clicking on the value on the report, either in the viewer window or in the PDF viewer after you output your file. Sometimes components need parts that are not part of the schematic e.g. holders, bolts or casings. For example purposes, we are going to place a transformer on the design that would require bolts for holding it. To add the bolts, we return to the property editor and use the bomb part section at the top. Select New from the bomb part menu for the bomb part creator dialog. If the parent category is set as all, then every component is available for selection. Once your component is selected, new parts can be added to your bill of materials. Complete all fields as needed and click Create. The dialog box will remain open allowing you to add more parts if needed. Once your new parts are added to the property editor, you can add or change properties just like any other component on your bill of materials. When completed, apply changes and return to your physical view. The part and all its properties are now added. Just like fields and categories, you can also delete the part if needed. The big difference here to adding is that parts can only be removed individually, not as a group, as per the adding menu. As with all the Proteus modules and menus, changes are carried across as you make them. Locating the component in ICES Use the context menu to edit the properties. You can see the properties we have added have been assigned to the component itself. If you wish to, the compile to library command in the library menu will save these components in a library of your choice, with your specified properties for future use on other projects.